Hello, I bring you peace and grace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And today we pick up our Gospel of Matthew Bible study with chapter 16, verses 24 through 28. And that reads in the New International Version, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is, is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God and let us now pray. God, we thank you for this word. We ask that you would give us courage and faith to follow your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. All right. We have right here in this passage, the heart of Christian discipleship. Uh, you might notice that um, I'll use the word Christians, and I, I use it because it's a common word. and We all know uh, what that word is supposed to mean, but my preferred word is not so much Christians, but disciples. Um, and the reason is because uh, I think Christian has become so overused that sometimes we miss what the point of being a Christian is, uh, whereas a disciple of Jesus, I think, more closely resembles uh, that identity, you know, to the degree that disciple means to disciple yourself off of somebody, to be a follower of somebody, to emulate somebody, to discipline oneself, uh, to conform oneself to the parameters and the lifestyle of uh, the one to whom you disciple. Uh, so I seek to be a disciple of Jesus. I, I want people to look at me and say, yeah, that guy follows Jesus. Um, you know, that guy acts strangely compared to the conventions of this world. Uh, he has a, a different philosophy the same way that in ancient Greece, you could say, oh, that's a you know disciple of Socrates, that's a disciple of Plato, that's a disciple of Aristotle, that's a disciple of Zeno, or you know whoever these um, uh, figures were in the ancient world uh, who represented different Greek philosophies, Epicurus, uh, for example. And so um, I want to be a disciple of Jesus, and it says right here what the heart of discipleship is, and it's so simple, it's amazing, uh, how much we can complicate it. And, uh, and I'm guilty of complicating it. You know, week after week after week, I'm trying to think of something to say in, in sermons and in messages, in Bible studies. And I feel like I'm, I'm plumbing my own creativity in my own mind uh, instead of just keeping it very simple and close to the heart of the gospel. And uh, the heart of discipleship is this. If anyone would come after me, if anyone would be my disciple, he must deny himself take up his cross and follow me. Now, um, to deny oneself, uh, I think is, is easy enough to understand, right? It means that the, the, the polar star, right? The, um, the orientation of my life cannot be upon my own selfish desires, whether they're noble selfish desires or innocuous selfish desires, anything that is self-centered, anything that is focused primarily on self-preservation and self-fulfillment. Now, what I don't think that this means, and there's plenty of evidence in the Bible that this could not be the case, it doesn't mean that we become self-abusive or self-hating. Uh, it doesn't mean that we uh, are commanded to not take care of ourselves, to not eat properly, to not exercise, to not give ourselves rest, to not draw boundaries around ourselves that are appropriate. I, I don't think any of that is indicated here. To deny oneself means specifically to take ourselves out of the ultimate seat of power and authority. You know, we don't worship ourselves. We don't make ultimate decisions about the way life should be lived or the way the universe is constructed or should be constructed. We are not God, and yet we play the role of God in our own lives. Uh, there's a great analogy that I've read before, and those of you, uh, you know, who are familiar with um, where I have read it will recognize it, but uh, there's a, um, a metaphor or analogy of uh, an actor who thinks that he is the director, right? So he thinks he's the director, and so because the actor thinks he's the director, he starts ordering people around and starts moving the scenery the way that he wants it and starts changing the play a little bit to suit himself. 
and um, you know sometimes he's very nice and gracious and uses you know um, a carrot rather than a stick to try to manipulate and move people wherever he wants them but ultimately because people are who they are uh, it's not they're not going to behave you know things aren't going to stay in place the play's not going to go off well and he's going to be very disappointed and of course this analogy or this metaphor is uh, a way to understand the way mo most people live their life right we think that we are the director of our lives you know if you think about your life as a play, as some kind of dramatic act, you probably think of yourself as the director. You know, you are in charge of your life. You're the one that's running the show. And why would we not think that? It sure, it sure seems to be the case. And that idea is reinforced around us. It's up to us to do X, Y, and Z. It's up to us to study hard. It's up to us to work hard. It's up to us to do the right thing in order to get the things that life has to offer. And the problem is, is that we have posited ourselves, we have pushed, put ourselves in the wrong position. We are not the director of our own lives. God is the director of our lives. We are the actors. And sometimes the actor is going to tell us to do things that doesn't make sense, but it's okay because we don't have the perspective that the director does. And the director is going to organize the play not so that everyone gets to be a star. So, you know, God's not going to direct my life so that I get to be the star. God's going to direct my life so that the play comes out well, so that life goes well, so that it's a, it's a drama that means something. Okay, I don't want to push that metaphor uh, further than it's meant to go, but you get the picture. And what we're called to do is deny ourselves in that way. In other words, I am not some center of gravity. I'm not this thing, this point this like attractive object to which all things are supposed to come right i'm not like this center of gravity that is supposed to attract experiences and stuff and prestige and acclaim and so forth and the goal of life is to get as much stuff as possible right that's not the way life works if anything i'm like this channel right through which all of the good stuff flows god is working in this world and if I am faithful, if I'm a disciple to the one that I follow or claim to follow, then I will make myself available for that greater transcendent power or force to use me or to work through me. So I can be, you know, not this thing, but rather this channel, this opportunity in time and space for the love, grace, mercy of God to pour into the world, into all the places that it's needed. Another metaphor would be like an instrument, you know, in, in the hand of God that my job is to fit myself to be of maximum service uh, to the God that holds me as that instrument. And the way that that kind of life is described here is to pick up one's cross and to follow him. Now we all know <laughs> what the cross is. The cross is an instrument of death. The cross is a burden. Uh, the cross is something you know that the world will nail you against. And we're fortunate, you know, at least those of us in the Western world and in certain echelons of society, that we don't, uh, we're, you know, we're not forced to suffer the way that a lot of people have been forced to suffer throughout the world. Uh, so that's good news. That, that should be celebrated as a blessing. However, we should always have the lens to remember that the whole story of Jesus is the story of clashing of kingdoms. I've said that almost every Bible study lesson, right? It's the clashing of kingdoms, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdoms of this world. And we live in the kingdoms of this world. And so we let the kingdoms of this world tell us how to live, right? And it usually seems to be that the kingdoms of this world will encourage us to self-preserve, to live in that self-centered, selfish way. And the reason that we're forced to live in these self-preserving, self-centered kinds of ways is because we're, we're, we're given boundary lines that if we push up against, then our self-preservation will be threatened. So in the Roman Empire, you know, do this, do that, stay obedient, you know, worship the emperor, X, Y, and Z, and, and you will live. And that is a self-preserving mechanism. So the empires of this world, societies as they are constructed, give us the confines and the strictures that tell us where to live, how to live, and if we want to be self-preserving, then we will stay within those boundary lines. The gospel of Jesus, to be a disciple of Jesus, liberates us 
from those uh, boundary lines, from those constrictors, from those threats. To be a disciple of Jesus means that we need not worry about self-preservation, that we are called to do the glorious work of God's kingdom building in this world, to pick up our cross and be willing to suffer, to pick up our cross and be willing to work, to pick up our cross and be willing to follow the one who goes before us because God is using us for a greater purpose. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be scared uh, and therefore, we don't have to be self-preserving. Uh, this can be, of course, understood. Uh, I mean, there's only this means one thing, <laughs> right? But the way it's applied is is as varied as the many different you know contexts that people can find themselves across the globe and throughout history. We're fortunate, you know, that we don't have, as I've mentioned in previous uh, videos, we you know we don't have secret police knocking on our doors. We're not thrown into prisons and tortured or executed for our faith. Uh, in this particular day and age. Other people have been throughout history and, and some people still are to this day. And to pick up your cross and to follow him nonetheless in those contexts, I think is very inspiring and very humbling. So let us do our part where we are in the way that we can. All right, take care. God bless. Have a wonderful day.